no parent wants to hear that their child is being bullied at school. Even though you can't always be there in your child's time of need, there are ways to act and talk to your kids about bullying. Travis Sieber is a counselor at Washington High School and has, been, has seen this issue firsthand. He's here with advice on how to respond if your child is being bullied. Thanks so much for coming in today, Travis. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, you work at the high school, but do you believe that bullying all starts at a very young age? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think bullying or really conflict, social conflict, is, is nothing new to this generation and nothing new to high school students. But it can start uh, um, at the very young adolescence and uh, go on and even through uh, adulthood as well. So bullying, conflict, the conflict cycle is nothing new. Um, and uh, we've had uh, conflict in schools for years, and uh, our, our goal is to try to stop it before it becomes uh, uh, really disruptive to the learning environment and, um, and to the person as well. What are the different types of bullying? From a high school standpoint, the, the parts of bullying that I'm the most uh, uh, familiar with probably I include the cyberbullying um, has been the, the most uh, common that I've seen. Um, the, the thing to remember about bullying is bullying is often isolated and it's repeated. Um, and there is a difference between harassment and bullying, uh, but the important thing is we don't want it to disrupt the, the learning environment or the social environment of our students. So, so you mentioned cyberbullying. Now, cyberbullying is whether it's on your phone, computer, so a lot of times this will happen off school grounds. So if you have parents calling in about their kids being bullied by other kids at school, is this something that the school will still get involved with and work with, even though it's not actually happening at school? Yeah, w the one thing we often tell students, parents, and uh, everybody involved, if you see something, say something. So if something is happening outside of school, and we know that there is a contact or a relationship with those two people inside the school, uh, that's something we would want to know about and see what steps we can do to intervene uh, to hopefully make a small problem not turn into a bigger problem. Now, no parent wants to see their child being bullied, but if they are, what is the best way for parents to get involved? Um, I think parents need to have that conversation uh, with their, their son or daughter and to look for changes, maybe some noticeable changes that they're seeing at home. Um, oftentimes if, if they have been with a friend or a group of friends and they're not necessarily with that uh, uh, person or, or hanging out, you know, um, that's a sign and we just want transparency with the, the, the parent and the, the student to uh, sort of get things out in the open because oftentimes with bullying, um, it's something that you want to keep inside and not let a lot of people know about. As a parent, how can you talk to your child starting at a younger age and explain to them what bullying is and how it's not okay? Mm -hmm. um, keep the lines of communication open, especially if technology is involved. Um, at the, the when uh, your son or daughter gets a smartphone or um, has a new piece of technology, talk to them about the um, right ways to handle social media and uh, if there's some some um, pieces that uh, they're seeing that are conflicting um, and they're having a hard time with that to be able to, to talk to somebody at school and also talk with a, a parent as well. So one of these points is to talk about bullying and how to stand up to it. So when someone's being bullied and maybe you're an outsider and you see this, sometimes it might be scary to get involved just because you think the bully might start coming after you. So what do you have for advice on that? Mm -hmm. That's probably the most challenging part, um, to work with students to say, please say something. What we work with at school is a lot of bystander training. So oftentimes other kids on the peripheral will see that there's some conflict going on or they'll see something that's not right. We encourage those students to step up and to tell someone at school or to tell that person's parent of what they're seeing and how it's not right. So um, again, you know, taking that step forward because oftentimes it will get worse before it gets better if, if you keep it inside and not say something. So you mentioned the school has those bystanders to help get people to stand up for others, but as a school district, what else does the school do when it comes to bullying? I mean, for getting involved, how how much can you? Do you sit down with students and talk to them? Do you have any seminars explaining, you know, there's no tolerance for bullying? Mm -hmm. With the size of our schools, I'm at Washington High School, so with close to 2,000 students, we're, we're fortunately lucky that bullying um, affects maybe less than 1% of our students. Um, 
What we do is more of a group approach. We have uh, the ask, listen, and form. We call it ALI, A-L-I method, uh, which means to ask questions and to ask your friends how they're doing. So it's more peer-to-peer -peer, uh, training with that bystander. We'll go into classrooms the first part of the year and uh, discuss the ALI. And the listen is really listen to your friends and hear what they're saying. And then the I is inform. Inform a member of the school um, inform a parent of something that that is not quite right. Now all in all this is all about keeping bullying away because it's not good for a child's mental health so if your child is being bullied and doesn't do anything about it or get help what can this do to a child's mental health? Well, like I said, if, if you keep it inside and, and you're not able to express what your true emotions and feelings are, um, this can have um, social effects. It could have physical effects. Um, as a counselor, I've heard stories where students have not slept. Uh, their eating habits change as well. So the physical toll it can take um, can be very, very great if there's, there's not some intervention. So oftentimes it takes a group approach to help that individual overcome um, the bullying. How about as far as grades go? Does this impact that? Sometimes. Um, I've seen it in high school where if that bully or person that's harassing them is in the class with them, um, oftentimes they may be down in the nurse's office during that class time or down in the counselor's office until we see a trend that maybe every day second period this particular student is not going to class. Um, as a counselor you have to dig a little deeper and find out what's, what's really going on and um, see what you can do to, to help and, and maybe the teacher seeing something as well and um, oftentimes we'll take the steps to to make sure that the learning environment is not interrupted. Alright, great information. Thank you so much Travis for coming in today.